Hey guys, so in the last video I went over what it is we're going to be making in this tutorial series. And now what I want to do is go ahead and start making the HTML page for the login. And we're also going to be doing a little bit of the CSS as well. So let's go ahead and create two files inside of any directory that you decide to create. Just make sure they're inside of the same directory. Create one called login.html and then create another called style.css. Now inside of the HTML page, let's go ahead and create the structure for our HTML skeleton. And we'll um, create header tags and body tags. And then it should end up looking exactly like this. Now inside of the head tags, the first thing I want to do really quick is create a link tag with an rel equals style sheet and an href that's equal to style.css. Now, I'm going to come into actually the very first thing I'm going to do is show you guys um, what you need to do in order to make sure that um, you're able to follow along with this tutorial. So go ahead and right click or command click on a Mac, uh, login.html, click reveal and explore. And it'll be a little bit different on Mac, but you'll understand it when you see the menu. Double click on the login.html page, and now you can see the HTML page is open. Whenever you make changes here on your VS code, come back over here and click refresh to see those changes happen. Now, in my case, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using a local development server in order to make it easy for the tutorial. So every time I save over here, it will automatically refresh over here. If you guys want to learn how to do that, I'll show you how to do that in a very quick tutorial. Otherwise, um, you know, you can look it up. It's pretty simple, but I will help you guys if you would like to achieve this. So the first thing I want to do is just make sure that um, the link tags that uh, we created are actually working. So the first thing I like to do is just come in here, create a body tag, and then inside of this, put the uh, background color equal to black. And then if that changes to black, if you click refresh, then you know that it is successfully linked. So I know that it's linked now. So let's go ahead and actually start writing our, um, our HTML. Now I'm going to include um, bootstrap in this. So above the link, if you look in the description of this video, I'm going to provide a link to copy the code that I'm about to paste here. This is just going to be jQuery and bootstrap so that it makes uh, looking it, it makes making the form look good. Very easy. I hope that sentence made sense. Um, so just go there, copy that code and paste it directly above the um, link tag here, right here it should be four lines. And once you have that, then you successfully have Bootstrap and jQuery linked. So go ahead and save that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and actually start writing our um, our body HTML. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a div, and it's going to act as the container for our login section. Now I'm going to give it an ID of login, and I'm going to give it a class of form container. Form container is going to be a uh, bootstrap class. Now we're going to put a header on inside of here that's going to say log in, and I'm going to give it a class of header as well. So when I save this, you can see now we have log in there. Let's create a horizontal row underneath, which is just an HR tag. It does not need a closing tag. And now you can see there's a horizontal line that separates the header from the rest of the form that we have not created yet. So let's create another div and inside of this div tag I actually want to add an ID of email and I want to give it a class of form group which is a bootstrap class as well now this part we're gonna use a data attribute put type data put a hyphen and then whatever we put after the hyphen we can define the name of it so we can put whatever we want here as long as it follows the guidelines of the HTML syntax in our case I'm gonna put step because this is gonna represent each individual step of the login process and in our case, putting in our email is the very first step. And we're going to be using this in JavaScript. So for now, you don't have to worry about it. The JavaScript portion of this tutorial is going to be a few videos from now. So just put it for now, and then we'll get back to it if it's a little confusing. Don't worry about it, okay? So let's put a label. And this label is going to be, it's going to say, enter your email. And underneath that, we're going to put the input that the label corresponds to. And that's going to be of type equals text because uh, our email is going to be text and we're going to give it an email uh, an id of email input let's also give it a class of 
form control, which is a um, bootstrap class. And let me actually show you the difference really quick. So if I save it, you can see the input, what this looks like now. And then when I put in the um, form control class, bootstrap makes it look a lot better right off the bat. Now, since we have this label here, we might as well put a four email input and email input this. So this four here is which input is this label for? And then we use the ID of the input that we created down here as the uh, essentially the key. So now when I save this, if I come over to the input and I click, I mean the label, sorry, and I click the label, it automatically um, selects the input for us, which is really nice. Let's put another div underneath this, which is gonna be of ID password. This is gonna be our password section. And of course, this is also gonna get a form group class, form hyphen group. Now put a space here because we're going to give this one more class. We're going to give it the class of final. And the reason why we're giving it the final class is because it's the final step in our login process. When it comes to logging in, there's only two steps. There's log, there's typing in your email address and then typing in your password. So typing in your password is the final step. And we're going to use that in our JavaScript code to, um, to get ready to submit the information to the uh, Firebase API that we're going to be hooking up later. So put data hyphen step, and this is the second step in the process. So inside of this, we're gonna put another label. This is gonna say enter your password, and the four is gonna be, okay, hold on. The four is going to be password input. So let's create an input underneath here. And the ID is gonna be password input and what we're going to do is we're going to give it a class of form control now i'm for now i'm going to say type equals text because i'm going to show you the difference between uh, type equals text and type equals password so both of these if i type in text you can see the text in plain day i'm going to change our password input to type equals password and then i'm going to refresh now when i type in the email you can still see uh, the text, but now with the password input, you cannot see it, which makes it really, uh, it makes it more secure. So if anybody's looking over your shoulder or something, they can't see what you're typing. And hopefully, by the way, guys, if someone's looking over your shoulder while you're typing a password, you should definitely be sketched out by that. But anyway, we want to go ahead and do that for the sake of it. Now let's go ahead and underneath, um, underneath our password section, I'm going to create little spaces just to make it easy for you guys to see the separation between all of this. So underneath the password section, we're gonna to wanna to create a paragraph tag, okay? And inside of this paragraph tag, we're going to be populating error information that might occur when trying to log in. Say you type in the wrong email or the wrong password, we're gonna to wanna to have some sort of place to put in some error information. And we're gonna use JavaScript to populate this, so we're actually gonna leave this empty, but we are gonna give it an ID of error message so that we can access it easily through JavaScript. Now underneath this, we're gonna to wanna to put a button and this button is just gonna say next. And let's give it a ID of next button. And I'm gonna save it and you can see now the next button's here, but it looks kind of plain and kind of ugly. So we're gonna put in a class BTN space BTN slash primary, which is a bootstrap classes that kind of makes it a little bit prettier to look at. So below that, we'll go ahead and put another div. This is gonna be an ID of back button, back hyphen button. Now, this is going to be our little back button so that when we're on the password step, if we realize, oh, dang, I forgot, I left a letter out of my email or something, you can click the back button and it'll go back to the email input and you can fix that. So we wanna create a little back arrow and in order to do that, we're gonna use um, a code and we're gonna put the and sign, the number sign, eight, five, nine, two, semicolon. And when I save this, you can see the little back arrow here. That gives us the ability to use the back arrow. So now we're going to go underneath that and we're gonna create a, another div. And we're gonna give this an, uh, a class of info section. And we're gonna basically use this info section um, for our uh, section that's going to say, hey, you don't have an email yet. If you don't have an account or whatever, click to sign up for free. So let's create a paragraph tag. And inside of this, say, just put don't have an account yet, 
question mark. And then under that, we're going to create an anchor tag, which is just an A. And we're going to give that an href, which is the link that that um, link is going to lead to. And in our case, signup.html, which we have not created yet. So when I save this, let me actually put some text in here really quick. Let's say sign up for free exclamation point. So when I save this, you can see the link here and it looks like a standard link, which is great. But when you click it, it's not going to bring you anywhere because we don't we have not created the sign up.html page yet. We're going to do that in the very next video. So now that we have all of that set up, I'm going to remove all of these extra spaces that I added for um, for you guys. And once I finish that. Make sure everything's indented properly and I'm going to click save and we're going to go ahead and move on to some CSS over here. So the very first thing that I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to set the body and the HTML attributes to have a width of 100% and a height of 100%. And that just makes sure that the body and the HTML, everything inside of it takes up 100% of the windows available height. Okay, then I'm going to want to just reference some stuff within the body itself. And I want to go ahead and stop for a second. And let's, uh, I want you guys to look in the description of this video, you'll see a link to the background image for this video tutorial series, I want you to copy that link over and paste it into your browser. And when you get to it, you'll see this, I want you to click free download. And when you get to the uh, wherever the file is that it downloaded to I want you to rename it to BG which is just short for background. And then I want you to drag that file into the same directory as your login.html and your style.css. So once you've done that, now you have the background image in the same directory as your um, index.html file and style.css. Go ahead and put background image and set that to URL bg.jpg. JPG is just the file extension for the image. Now, that when we save it is going to give us this. Now, we're going to want to do one more thing just to make sure that it always uh, takes up the height and the width of the background, which is just copying this stuff over right here. It all does the same thing. The only difference is it allows for multi browser support. Okay, so this is going to be Mozilla. And then this is like Opera, I believe, and you're going to want to just have all four of these to make sure that you're supporting multiple browsers here. All that's doing is, like I said, it's making sure that the background fits both vertically and horizontally. So when I save that, you can see it resizes a bit and it definitely looks a lot better. So below this, let's start styling our form container. Let's set a width of 500 pixels. See when I save that now, it's only 500 pixels wide. I'm going to set the position to be absolute. And I'm going to set the top. Now this is interesting. I'm going to use the calc function that's built into CSS and I spelled that wrong. C A L C and then parentheses, we can put a little bit of math and we're going to say 50% minus 250 pixels. And what that's basically saying is the top attribute, which is the very top of this form container is now going to be 50% um, down the page. So halfway down the page minus 250 pixels. So it's going to center it vertically. And the reason why we're using 250 pixels is because that's half of the um, uh, it's close to half of the height of this, uh, this particular um, element, it's not going to be exact. But since we're only um, specifying the height, the width of this, uh, we're going to guess that it's going to be approximately a square. So let's let's save this and you can see it is approximately centered vertically. And then let's go ahead and do the same exact thing. But instead of top, we're going to use left. And that's going to center it horizontally. So now we have it centered almost perfectly vertically, but definitely per perfectly horizontally. The reason why it's perfectly horizontally is because we specified 500 pixels and 250 pixels is half of that. Okay, hope all that makes sense. Let's set the background color for our container to be RGBA. A meaning alpha, and we're going to set it to be black with an alpha of 0.7. So when I refresh, you can see now that there's sort of this opaque black background on our form container. Let's add a padding of 50 pixels, which makes it a little bit less choked out by the, the container, get frees it up a little bit in there. Set a box shadow. 
And the box shadow is gonna be two pixels, two pixels, five pixels black, and really the best way, I sort of spelled that wrong. Let's uh, make sure I spell that correctly. Now, uh, just take a look at the way this looks now, and when I save it, now you can see there's this sort of shadow underneath it that makes it look like it's kind of three-dimensional. Now let's add a border radius of, uh, let's go with 10 pixels. It's gonna give it a bevel on the corners. Now you can see the corners are not sharp anymore. Uh, it makes it a little less intrusive. And let's set the text color inside to be white. So now that is looking just way better. Now the next button is kind of small. We want it to be really easy to, to see and to click on. So let's access it by the, the number sign because it's an ID. And let's say next button, width is 100%. So when I save it, now you can see the width of the button is at 100%. Now, one thing that I'm really not liking is the, um, the back button right now. It's very small and when I hover over it, I can just, it, it looks like you can highlight it, which you don't want. So what we wanna do is we wanna access the back button through the uh, ID, and we wanna set the font size, make it a little bigger, let's say 40 pixels. Now it's pretty big. Let's give it a display, whoops, a display of inline block. If I can type, that'd be great. Sorry guys, I'm kinda typing in an awkward angle with the microphone in the way. And let's uh, give the cursor pointer. Let's make the cursor pointer so that when I hover over it, it turns into a hand, and it's very obvious that you are able to click it. Although a little bit more flair would be nice. So let's say back button, colon, hover. And then whenever you hover over it, let's set the color of that to gray. So now you can see the color change when you're over it. So it's more obvious when you're actually hovering over this thing. You can click it and it just feels a lot better. Um, so let's, um, let's say, um, let's just type in here, um, test at gmail.com and then you know type in a random password you know when you click next of course nothing's gonna happen because we don't have the uh, JavaScript hooked up yet and when I click sign up for free we don't have the sign up page uh, made yet so that's what we're gonna do in the next video is we're gonna create the sign up page that's gonna be the very next portion of this video and then after that we're gonna do the JavaScript for this so hope you guys enjoyed this portion of the tutorial. Keep a lookout for the next section soon. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Please give me a thumbs up. It helps me out a lot, and I will see you guys soon.